मूवेंट जैसा Hello students today i'm going to explain about placenta before that yesterday i had explained in detail about how the implantation happens so in brief i want to explain what is in this in the previous class in the previous class we came to know that zygote is formed diploid single cell zygote is formed it undergoes a special kind of mitotic division that is called as cleavage and then forms two cell stage three cell uh, four cell stage eight cell stage and 16 eight to 16 stage is called morula and morula will undergo blastulation to form blastocyst blastulation to form blastocyst the blastocyst buries itself in the endometrium a phenomena called implantation and implantation takes place in seventh day after fertilization after implantation the blastocyst will convert into another early embryonic stage called as gastrula and gastrula has three germ layers the ectoderm the endoderm as well as the mesoderm because of which we are trochloplastic and all the three germ layers are formed in gastrula the process of formation of gastrula from blastocyst is called gastrulation and all the three germ layers might arise that is have arise from epithelium the first germ layer to form this endoderm so three germ layers were formed one is ectoderm another is mesoderm and the last one is endoderm now these three germ layers we form different parts of the body now when it comes to ectoderm certain structures say like mentioning them brain then spinal cord which together will come under cms will be produced from which will be formed from ectoderm so apart from cms other structures that are formed due to ectoderm are the parts of the eyes such as retina cornea lens and the internal ear is also produced from ectoderm that is the membranous 
labyrinth. The epidermis is also produced from ectoderm. The dentine, which is present in the teeth, it is not produced from ectoderm, but instead the enamel is produced from ectoderm. Most of the nervous system part, including the nerves, they are produced from the ectoderm. Now coming to mesoderm, some of the structures formed from mesoderm will be the muscles, the bone, the cartilage, the areolar connective tissue, the reticular connective tissue, and the adipose connective tissue, and even coelomic epithelium is made up of mesoderm, and also. Gonads, that is the productive system, except for prostate gland or mesodermal origin. So these are some of the structures that are formed from mesoderm. The third one is the endoderm. Most of the epithelial covering of the digestive system consists of endoderm, whether it is mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine except for the last part, except for the terminal part, the remaining part. The epithelium is derived from the endoderm. And the epithelium of the respiratory system also to consist, also is developed from the endoderm, like that of lungs, bronchus, bronchioles, trachea. And certain glands such as pancreas, liver, they also will be derived from the endoderm. Then, urinary bladder is also derived from endoderm except for the trigonal area. So these are uh, some of the structures from which are derived from these three germinal layers, whereas spleen is formed from mesoderm, ureter is also formed from mesoderm, kidneys are formed from mesoderm, whereas pyre uh, uh, matter, neratomite matter formed from mesoderm, whereas dinner matter, like that, uh, various structures are formed from these basic germ cells. Now, as I was telling, when a blastocyst divides into two, it can give rise to monozygotic twins. But if there is any defect after gastrulation, it may not give rise to monozygotic twins. Instead, it will give rise to some fetal defects. Now next I am going to explain about placenta. What is placenta? It is physical and physiological connection between mother and fetus. It means that through this placenta only exchange of material occurs between fetus to maternal body or from maternal body to fetus. And uh, this is acting as a barrier. So therefore you should know that placenta is physical and physiological connection with the physical as well as physiological connection between mother and fetus. So, is it a permanent structure or a temporary structure? Placenta is a temporary structure formed during pregnancy only. So, therefore, you should know that placenta is a temporary structure.
It is a temporary structure only present during pregnancy that supports the exchange of material from fetus to maternal body and from maternal body to fetus. So that is about the placenta, nature of placenta. Now placenta is is weighs about 500 grams on the average. Weighs about 500 grams. And its diameter is 22 centimeters. And thickness is around 2 to 2.5 centimeters. And it is it is round and it is about the size of the dinner plate detector and the thickness is more at the center compared to the peripheral region. Now this is the placenta and this is the little ball. This will be the fetal side. That side will be the maternal side. So this will be around 22 centimeters and the little cord. Okay, the thickness will be more at the center compared to the peripheral. And therefore, it should have two parts. This part, which is a fetal part, the other end will be the maternal part of the placenta. Then, can the placenta act as endocrine gland? That is also true. It is not only a temporary structure, it is also a temporary endocrine gland producing hormones. So, placenta also produces hormones, which I explain in detail about the, when I will explain about the function of placenta. So, this was about the placenta. How is it formed? Placenta is formed by contribution of both the fetal part as well as maternal part. The fetal part will be called chorionic villi. Which is nothing but the fetal part of placenta. Whereas the maternal part will be Decidua basalis. This is called the maternal part. So it means that the placenta is not contributed by only either of the fetus or only by the fetus. Contribution from both the sides. That is, the maternal part and the fetal part together forms the Placenta and it will take around eight weeks for uh, the placenta to be completely developed. Then how is in brief? Now I explain how the placenta is formed, and the placenta takes different names. Why is the reason that they take different names? Now you see, already I explained yesterday that the placenta is buried in the endometrium. So this will be the prophoblast, and say it is a bilateral disc still. It is the blastocystum it is implanting. And I told as soon as implantation continues, this whole part will be what? The decidua of the maternal. This will be decidua capsularis, this is decidua basalis, the remaining part will be decidua peritalis. Now, the blastocyst, outer layer of the blastocyst, 
it is called as a trophoblast. And you split into cytochrome trophoblast and syncytial trophoblast. Now those layers in future, as it develops, as implantation continues, it will give rise to finger-like projections. So it will give rise to finger-like projections. Now this finger-like projection is called chorionic villi. Okay. So chorionic villi will have the trophoblast layer. Further, it will also be joined by the extra embryonic mesoderm and also the blood vessel of So now, chorionic villi is which part? The part of the embryo, that means the fetal part of this. Okay, in future after eight weeks, it becomes a fetal part. Now, this part is maternal part. That means the villi is penetrating into the decidua basalis. That means it should be contribution by both the fetal part called chorionic villi and the maternal part called decidua basalis. Contribution so fetal part chorionic villi and the maternal is nothing for the placenta. So that is how. The placenta is not. Now, this is only the earliest stage. It will take for the placenta to completely develop. Okay, it will take eight weeks. So, this is about how initially the chorionic villi further, this is just the chorionic villi, it's not the placenta. It has to completely develop further. The chorionic villi should develop, there should be intervillar sinuses should be there. So that uh, then placental villi should form to increase the surface area. Those all will be part of the development of then certain formation in order to uh, uh, divide the placenta into cotyledons like that. Further complete development will be there. Okay, that complete development takes at least eight weeks. So this is the contribution. This is explanation as to how the fetus also how the embryo contribution in fetus. And in the city of both contribution will be there in the formation of placenta. as well as the trophoblast together will be called as the chorion. And since chorion contributes to formation of placenta, human placenta is called as chorionic placenta. Okay. Whereas in marsupials, yolk sac may contribute to placenta. Okay. And certain eukaryotes other than primates, electrons also may contribute to placenta. But what is common in all is chorion. Okay. So only membrane, only extra embryonic membrane that will not contribute to formation of placenta will be amnia. Otherwise, in, if you consider all animals uh, together, uh, all three are the main that contributes to formation of placenta. One is allantois, the yolk sac in certain animals, and the chorion. In humans, that is in primates also, the placenta is formed from chorion. So therefore, human placenta is also called chorionic placenta. Next is metadiscoidal placenta. What is 
metal is called in percentiles. Now consider this is the home. This is the home. And the placenta will be disc shaped area. It will not be present on all sides. It will be confined only to disc shaped area. So here, the little part, suppose it is just an early embryo, early fetus it is. So followed by, so it is a disc shaped area which is connected to the fetus by umbilical cord. Okay. So it is not initially what happens. The placenta will be almost to diffuse. That means chorionic villi is formed almost throughout where the chorion spread. Afterwards, what happens? The chorion will be found only in a particular disc shaped area. It becomes confined only to disc shaped area. That's why it is called as metapiscoidal placenta. Initially, almost diffuse and distributed throughout wherever chorion is there. But later on, only the chorion will develop into placental villi in a disc shaped area, only to a particular area in the decidua. Understand? So, therefore, it is called meta discoidal placenta. The next is Human placenta is also called hemochorion placenta. Now, what is hemochorion placenta? So, I shall show first here. Consider this part is the maternal part, and this part will be the fetal part. Okay. So, so single branched see if this is the placental very light and this is another placental layer. Initially it will be finger like projections and later on it gets branched in order to increase the surface area for exchange. Now here what happens, there are some sinuses appear in here. These are called as intervillar space. And this is maternal side and the maternal part and this will be fetal part. And on the maternal the capillaries will end in these intervillar spaces. That means maternal capillaries, the blood is going to be filled in this space here. Intervillar space. It means that there can be direct exchange between the villus and the blood present in the intervillar spaces. Okay. So here in the intervillar spaces. Ask. So now exchange will occur from this blood into the blood vessels here. That means even the veils will have supply of blood vessels. So exchange will occur between the intervillar space, which consists of the maternal blood, whereas inside the veils will be the fetal blood. So exchange will occur between the two. So that means that this villus is directly dipping into the maternal blood. Since the veils, chorionic villi, you can tell all the further placental villi, it will dip in directly into the blood of mother. So when it directly dips into the maternal blood, that's when we call it as hemochorial placenta because the chorionic villi will directly dip into the maternal blood or directly pass into the maternal blood. 
Okay. So that is why it's called as hemochorial placenta. Human placenta is also called decidimate placenta.
embryogenesis and organogenesis, always some energy is required. So, photomaterial constantly requires the supply of food. So, that supply of food comes as nutrition that too from mother. That's why the mother should have extra nutrition during pregnancy because that extra nutrition will be given, I mean, will be passing through the placenta and then to the fetus. What are those nutrients that passes the placenta and goes to the fetus? It can be, say, glucose, which is an important nutrient passing from mother to fetus. Okay. So that is a source of energy. Apart from glucose, amino acids, it can be. It can be fatty acids. And very important nutrients like vitamins. So these are the nutrition that pass from mother to fetus. Got? So that means fetus will get the food from mother, and that food first passes to the placenta and then only reaches to the fetus. So it should get through the placenta itself. So that is about the function of placenta. Then second, so as fetus, as there is a metabolism of fetus, what happens is excretory waste are produced, or nitrogenous waste are produced in the fetus. So, the excessively accumulated nitrogenous waste as well as whatever nitrogenous waste is produced in the fetus has to be removed from the fetus. Okay, that is excretion function. So, therefore, the nitrogenous waste that are produced in fetus nitrogenous waste that are produced in fetus, that also will be removed from the fetus, then it will reach to the exchange site called placenta and then it is going to reach to the maternal blood circulation and finally it will be removed through maternal kidneys, that is excretion also is performed through placenta. So the excretory waste also should pass through the placenta. Placenta also requires oxygen and whatever accumulated CO2 is there, it has to be removed. And that also has to be removed through placenta. It means that placenta, that is the, see the chorionic villi are part in the maternal blood. So this is the chorionic villi, placental villi, mainly branch placental villi. And this part directly to the maternal blood, the oxygen from the maternal blood goes inside the chorionic villi, which in turn has fetal blood vessels. And the CO2 from the fetal blood is going to release back into the maternal blood. Okay. From there, it is going to reach into circulatory system of mother. And finally, excreted outside. So it has an important, uh, uh, excuse me, um, not excreted. Finally, what happens is, the CO2 will be removed uh, through the lungs, uh, whereas excretion is removed through the kidney, whereas the CO2 that is removed from the fetus will be removed from the maternal body and the mediator we can tell is the placenta, that means through breathing process. So, so excretion, also the excretion waste should reach to the blood circulatory system of mother, and if CO2 is also there, the base CO2 should also reach to blood circulatory system of mother. This is removed by kidney, this is going to remove by of course the lungs. So while taking process, oxygen is taken through placenta. That means maternal blood, oxygenated blood is going to reach into the fetal circulation. 
So this is about the, and you should know that the fetus hemoglobin has more affinity for oxygen, so it can attract the oxygen from the more, much better uh, compared to the normal human being. It, it can has, has more affinity for oxygen, so it can attract oxygen from the maternal blood. So placenta acts as a storage organ also. This is an organ which can also act as temporary organ, remember. It also acts as a storage of food. For example, glycogen and all can be stored in placenta. Okay. So that means storage function, storage of food. This is also the function of placenta. So next is Placenta acts as barrier, that means it prevents certain substances from entering the fetus. For example, it will not allow the mixing of maternal blood with fetal blood. That means maternal blood cannot go inside or enter and pass into the mix with the fetal blood. It cannot occur. Understand? So it will prevent the mixing of blood of maternal as well as fetal blood. Therefore, since it prevents mixing, it is called as barrier. It acts as a barrier. And it can also prevent bacterial, some of the bacteria from entering into fetus. But unfortunately, placenta cannot prevent certain substances from reaching the fetus. It can be alcohol, it can be certain viruses like herpes simplex virus or HIV, or it cannot even prevent certain drugs. Earlier, there was a drug called as thalidomide. This drug was given in order to treat morning sickness in pregnant women. But this drug passed through the placenta and had bad effects on the fetus. Thus leading to condition like phobomelia, where there is an abnormal limb development. So developmental defects can occur therefore certain drugs are not preferred to be consumed during pregnancy one of the drug is thalidomide since it causes a developmental defect in fetus these substances can also be called teratogens so it acts as a barrier but for some substances it cannot act as a barrier Placenta cannot act as a barrier for one of the good things also, like immunity. See, fetus immune system is not still developed, so it requires support of mother for preventing of occurrence of diseases. So to get the fetus will get, get its immunity through mother. How does the fetus is against the immunity? Through an antibody. An antibody called IgG, which is IgG stands for immunoglobin G. This immunoglobin G or IgG is an actually molecule of immunity. It is, it is, it will confer or provide immunity to the fetus because fetus, its own immune system is not fetus own immune system is not still developed. So it needs immunity from mother through this molecule called IgG, which is called immunoglobin G or antibody G. Now this is the only antibody. Other antibodies are there like IgM, they cannot pass the placenta, but IgG can pass placenta. Can pass the placenta and provides immunity, that is disease resistance to the fetus. So therefore, what we say is it provides passive immunity, passes the placenta and then provides immunity, passive immunity. 
Why do you call it passive immunity? It is because fetus will not produce its own antibodies, getting a ready made antibodies from the mother. And that is why it is called as passive immunity. So, therefore, immunity of the fetus also comes due to what? Due to IgG that can pass the placenta. This is the only antibody that can pass the placenta. Other antibodies also are there, but they cannot pass the placenta. For example, IgM is there, IgD is there, IgE, they cannot pass the placenta. Okay. So, therefore, it provides passive immunity. So, these are some of the functions. Last function, which is very important for placenta, is endocrine function of placenta. That it is a temporary endocrine gland. Why do we say placenta is an endocrine gland? Because it secretes hormones. Since it secretes hormone and it is also temporary structure, it is also called temporary endocrine glands. The first hormone to be released during pregnancy will be human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. HCG. Human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. What is its importance? Is, what is its importance? Is the first hormone and the earliest hormone to be released during pregnancy. Okay, and this hormone can be detected in the urine of the pregnant woman. So it means that. If the HCG is present in the urine of a woman, it is an indicator that it is a positive test for pregnancy. And therefore, in many of the pregnancy tests available now, the method and the basis is detection of HCG in the urine. Now, what is the function of HCG is? It will stimulate corpus luteum so that it will continue, so that corpus luteum continue to produce a hormone called progesterone. And when progesterone is there, pregnancy can be maintained. Okay. So that is the function of human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. Then second function is human chorionic somatomanotropin. Somatomanotropin it is called. It was in the past called human placental lactogen. And now it is called human chorionic somatomanotropin. Now this hormone has effect on metabolism. So that there is an increase in glucose concentration. Okay, in spite of saying that a woman is starving, so when she is starving, she won't have enough nutrients. But in that case, which hormone is going to help? HCA. HCS. It is going to increase the metabolism in the maternal body. So that what it is going to increase metabolism. So that what happens? Glucose concentration will increase. And so that, in case of starvation also, there is energy source for the fetus. Third hormone is progesterone. And one more hormone 
is estrogen progesterone estrogen for example progesterone helps in maintaining pregnancy progesterone is going to help to maintain pregnancy and of course both of them will help in development of fetus overall development of fetus is due to progesterone and estrogen that one more hormone which is raised the rate after the gestation period that is during delivery process it will be released and that hormone is called relaxer what relaxer does is you have studied in the first year that there is pubic symphysis so the tissues in the pubic symphysis that the joint the pubic symphysis whatever the tissue is there that will be loosened okay that will be function of the loosening of the pubic symphysis when loosening of the pubic symphysis occurs then there also can be widening of cervix so that delivery process can easily occur apart from this thyroid hormone cortisol and also will be released from the placenta they also have a metabolic role so this completes about placenta
Sắt lên À Sắt lên